Hey everyone, this video is on the importance of checking your insulation after it is installed on your job site. I am finding so many times when installers come to in install cellulose insulation in the walls that they just don't know how to do it properly. And it is such an important part of the build to have done properly. I, I think it's just really important for you as, as the homeowner or the client, whether you've hired a, a GC or a builder to oversee your project, or if you're doing it yourself, or if you are a builder like me, it's so important to go in after the installers have finished and, and check over to make sure that they are doing it properly. I have built many houses in two different states now, and I know that there are companies out there who do dense pack blown in cellulose well, but I have not found them. They're kind of few and far between. Most companies like to blow in uh, blown fiberglass. I think they think it's easier. Uh, it seems less dusty when you're installing it. Um, but the fiberglass, you know, it, the dust that it does emit is full of little microparticles of glass and who wants that? I prefer to use the cellulose because it's a recycled material. It's, it's made from newspaper, so it's, it's non-toxic. And it also has a higher R value than blown in fiberglass. Um, R value, the R is the unit that is used to apply um, to how well a, a material works as an insulation, how well it resists heat transfer or heat loss. So a higher R value means a better insulation material. Um, it's, it does a better job at stopping heat loss or heat transfer. So the blown in uh, cellulose has a higher R value than fiberglass. But it has to be installed differently. And most companies are just so used to using fiberglass, they can just kind of whip in, do it really quickly, walk out, leave the job, and, and they're done. And they keep installing cellulose in the same way as fiberglass, and it can't be installed the same way. It's such an important step in the building process to have your insulation installed properly. If you have gaps, voids in your walls or in your ceiling from the insulation not being there or not being properly or it sagged over time because they didn't install it to the right density, that not only affects the comfort uh, that you feel in your house when you're living in it later, it can actually affect the durability of your house. Those voids can sometimes allow for condensation in your walls because of temperature differences. That condensation brings in mold and rot, and we don't want that anywhere in our house, much less in a closed off space on our wall where we can't see it and we can't access it very well. So it's super important to come in and check that. When the guys came in and started installing in this project, the first thing they did was to start to install the cardboard baffles that go up in the attic. You can see some just right up here above my head. These get installed right on top of the exterior wall. And the purpose of the baffle, and they make them in lots of different types of materials. I prefer to use cardboard because cardboard, it's just uh, paper. But the purpose of the baffle is to create a stop at the edge of your wall so that later when they come in and they're installing the insulation in the attic and they're blowing it, it won't just keep going out past the house and fill up your soffit material. So this creates a stop for that, but it also allows an air gap um, from the outside of your soffit to go above the insulation and up the roof plane and out of your vented roof. The baffles, when I first walked in, the, the young guy who was installing them, just, he had just never been taught what he was doing or the purpose of what he was doing. He had no knowledge of what purpose these baffles served. And so he couldn't critically think about um, what, what, what to do or how to install them when the situation was slightly different than what he might have been told. He was installing them on the inner edge of the wall. And I actually asked the, um, the main installer later, and he, he told me that the building inspector often tells them that's how they want to see them, installed on the inner edge of the wall, which is so wrong. If you do that, then at the top of your wall and at the edge of your attic, you're creating this void all the way around at the top of your house where you don't have insulation. You're gonna have a very cold spot at the top of your house. It's just so incorrect. So I had them move them all the way out. I actually had to take a couple off and restaple them up as an example. Like, look, I want them installed this way so that they were installed properly. And then after the, the next thing that they do is they install this, uh, a netting. So this white mesh stuff behind me is the netting on the wall that gets installed that will hold the cellulose into place. Um, and they stapled it up just like you would for a fiberglass insulation. Um, but with a dense pack blown cellulose, you actually need to do something they call 
lip stitching, I think, where they actually sort of wrap the paper around the edge of the stud and kind of staple it a little bit on the edge on each side. Um, they didn't do that here. They just kind of face face stapled it and they didn't use a whole lot of staples. They used enough for um, if it were fiberglass again. Um, and then they started to just bring in their hose and cut holes into the, into the paper and blow the insulation in. Um, <clears throat> I often find that cellulose insulation when blown in just kind of loosely this way, it gets stuck and caught up around blocking that's in the wall or pipes that are in the wall. So after the guys were done blowing, I came in and, and just sort of started looking around and you can, f you can just sort of put your hand on the insulation and push against it and tell that some cavities are more firm than others. And there's, there's just gaps and spaces where um, they just didn't fill in enough insulation. I, I kind of drew out on some arrows on the wall so that they would see it, but you can see my hand, um, how easily I can just reach in behind this paper here. It's just not nearly enough insulation. It should be compressed. Um, <clears throat> same over here. And there's lots of spaces like this. I found a few spaces that just were vacant holes entirely um, where it just didn't go around the blocking and they didn't check. So um, they're going to come back and they're going to work on fixing that. One of the other problems of not installing the uh, netting properly and of not knowing exactly how to install the fiberglass is that you might get too much insulation. So in this particular bay, they uh, overstuffed it. I'm not sure if you can see that, but um, the drywallers later are going to have a hard time with that. And that's another reason why I think people kind of poo-poo cellulose because they just, they just don't know how to install it properly. When the city inspector showed up, he was here and the building uh, or the insulation installer was here too. And I was having a conversation with both of them. And I was surprised that I, I later figured out that they didn't know some of the differences between cellulose and fiberglass either. The bu building inspector asked me what kind of insulation I was going to put in the attic. I said I was going to use blown cellulose. I was going to do 14 inches, which is R49. And that's higher than the code is for this area, which is R38. Um, and I said that and both he and the installer looked at me and were shaking their heads and were like, no, 14 inches is R38. And I, and I was confused because I, I thought my numbers were right. I was pretty confident, but here were both of these guys telling me that I was wrong. So, you know, okay, I must be wrong. So I, I looked it up later and what I didn't realize, and clearly they didn't realize either, was that fiberglass, blown fiberglass insulation has a lower R value. Its value is R2.5 per inch, and blown cellulose is about 3.5 per inch. So 14 inches of blown cellulose would be R49, whereas 14 inches of blown fiberglass, like they're used to seeing, is R38. And so I was just surprised that the professional insulation installer and the official building inspector didn't know something basic like the difference between our value between a fiberglass and a blown cellulose. I, I, it's just so important and I just see this so often um, that it, you know insulation companies say yeah yeah we'll blow cellulose for you you know it's fine whatever you want um, but they don't know or understand the difference between dense pack blown cellulose and just a loose fiberglass insulation and I would recommend of those two insulations that you go with a dense pack blown cellulose because like I said it gives you a better R value and it's a less toxic material it's a recycled material um, so I think all those things are positive but it does require a little bit more work on the end of the installer um, and it just requires some knowledge that apparently a lot of installers just don't have so it's just super important for you if you're requesting that to go back double check their work and, um, and just ask them. I mean, these guys are super nice. They, they wanted to come and fix everything. Um, but like I said, I think it's just a lack of information and a lack of training on their end.